Welcome back, everyone. Today, I am tackling one of the most dreaded spaces in my home, my linen closet. It's tiny. It is literally packed to the max, and I'm so ready to get it back under control and share with you just how I did it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Rachel. I'm a stay-at-home wife and mother to two toddler boys, a couple of dogs, and my handsome husband. And I just have to get this house in order for my family. 2022 will be the year I hope to achieve that, and we're starting with this closet. And here I am, second-guessing this project and questioning my life choices, also trying to figure out what I can safely remove first without creating an avalanche. So over the last few years, what was once a well-organized linen closet just became a catch-all. As my kids started to outgrow certain things, they would just get tucked away in this closet. There's empty boxes in here for items that we held on to just in case we had to return or exchange them under warranty. There are dog beds in here and some bath toys. There's cleaning supplies on the door. There's extra medicines and Pedialyte. And so I just have to take everything out of this closet so I can give the shelves a good wipe down, clean the floor out, and sort through all of the junk to figure out what I'm actually putting back into the space. Did you ever stop and think, why spend too much time just getting ready? Let me be honest. I don't know a single thing that I haven't done to make you notice me. Let me be real here. When I see you, my heart starts racing, but I don't know if I like this chasing and playing and waiting around. It's a shame that my hands start shaking. The shelves surprisingly weren't that bad. This floor, though. When you don't have to, there's so much that I'm still keeping to myself. Cause you don't listen, babe. But still, you got me missing you. When I see you, my heart starts racing. But I don't know if I like this chasing and playing and waiting around. It's a shame that my hands start shaking.
absolutely shocked by the amount of stuff that came out of this closet. So the first thing I did was run to the garage and grab some empty boxes that I could use during the sort and declutter phase of this process. The largest box on the right-hand side I designated for donations. The purple box in the middle is for brand new baby items that are still tagged. Those are things that I use for putting together baby shower gift baskets. And the far left box is things that I'm keeping in my house, but they don't necessarily belong in the linen closet. And then of course, I've got a trash bag that I'm currently going through boxes and getting rid of anything that we either no longer have or the warranty is expired. I wanna make things right, run away on this night, do whatever we like. We will see things clearly on top of the world, is what we deserve. closer look at the products I used to organize the closet. So I've got a white wire can rack from Walmart. I've got some soft baskets from TJ Maxx, too small and too medium. I've got some plastic bins from Hobby Lobby. I picked these up last spring, but they do have the spring shop back out this year. So if you don't see them in the store this week, they should be in the next few. This is an Ikea observator basket that I did not end up using. And then last but not least, a cloth hamper that matches the soft baskets.
one of my favorite parts of this project was repurposing a metal can rack to organize toiletry items. I stole this idea from myself in June, I think maybe actually April of 2020, I decided to redo my pantry. And at the time I had a metal can rack in there. I still do, as a matter of fact. And it just wasn't everything that I hoped and dreamed it would be. So I felt bad. I didn't want to get rid of it because I had it in my Amazon cart for like six months and asked my husband to buy it. And we waited until we had a little bit extra money. I mean, it was only like $20 at the time, but it was still money that we didn't necessarily have to spend. So it was in my cart forever and a day. We finally ordered it. I put my cans on it. I liked it, but I didn't love it. There was just, you know, some things that I didn't like about how the cans didn't roll straight forward on some of them and, you know, just very trivial stuff. But I did use it as a can rack for a while. And then when I went to redo my pantry, I decided, you know what, I can't get rid of this because my husband is (laughs) going to think I'm nuts. I literally wanted it for so long. I got it. I kept it as a can organizer for about six months, and then it just disappears. So instead of doing that, I kept it, and I just looked at it for about an hour. I just looked at it and looked at it and looked at it and thought, what can I do with you? And I was trying to see what I could use the rack for other than for cans, And I couldn't find anything. I literally looked on Pinterest. I looked on YouTube. I looked, I just Googled it. I looked at images. There was nothing there. Everyone who had a can rack used it for cans. And I thought that was absolutely nuts. So I ended up getting these Dollar Tree baskets. They come in three different sizes and you get multiple of them for a dollar. Um, at least a dollar at the time. And actually, fun fact, my local Dollar Tree is still just a buck. But I just got to digging through my little container stash and seeing what would fit on that can rack. And it just so happened to, I could Tetris things together perfectly on there. So once I realized that that was something that worked in my pantry, then when I bought this other can rack that I had originally meant to go underneath my master bathroom cabinet that ultimately didn't fit and I kept anyway, I said, you know what, I'll use it somewhere. It's just going to have to be for sorting various things. And then I'm so glad that I held off because once I got everything out of this cabinet, I found a ton of different things that I could organize. I've got bar soap in there. I've got wet wipes, aerosol deodorant. I've got a ton of different little toothpaste and flosses from the dentist and extra toothbrushes. I've got disposable razor blades and so forth. So it just worked out perfectly. And I am just so very excited to share it with you. I know it's not absolutely brilliant, but again, I didn't see it anywhere. And I was just absolutely shocked that nobody uses a can rack except for cans. (laughs) And because you can fit these Dollar Tree baskets inside not only this Walmart can rack, but the one that I got off Amazon, you could put anything that would really fit. You could sort craft supplies in it, office supplies, medicines, just whatever you got. If it fits, it works. The one from Amazon has got a little more space in between each shelf, and it's a little wider, but I will link both of those if you're interested.
folded the beach towels to make them flush with the top of the green baskets and the small soft basket I placed refillables like hand soap, Kleenex, and cotton balls. Then we've got our white towels which are reserved for guests only and then I put extra sheets and mattress protectors in the larger soft bins. on to the fun part, our DIY labels. So just as I did in my pantry, I decided to label the shelves instead of each particular basket or container. What you'll need is a laser printer. You'll also need some packing tape, which you'll see in the background. You will print off whatever it is that you want to label in whatever size that you need. And then you'll want to burnish some shipping tape over the ink, as I've done here, and then you'll go through and cut out each label. Next, you'll wanna soak your labels in a dish or container of lukewarm water for between five and seven minutes. You'll need to be gentle once you take the labels out of the water and rub the paper off of the tape. As you'll see, I got a little excited. I used too much force and tore mine completely in half and created a lot more work for myself. So I would suggest you make some dummy labels with nothing on them. Just simply burnish some packing tape onto a blank sheet of paper, soak it, and then kind of test it out with you know, what pressure you can use, but pretty gentle. And at this point, it's soaked for several minutes. And so... Once you get the paper started, the rest of it kind of comes off in one big sheet. So these are super cool. I promise they are not as flimsy as it appeared when I ripped the first one in half. I used too much pressure, but also I think the tape was weaker just because it was wet. But once they're dry, they're actually quite durable. I'd like to take a moment to thank whatever genius came up with these tape labels. Unfortunately, I can't remember exactly where I saw them. I want to say either Pinterest or YouTube, but these are amazing. They were super quick to make. They didn't cost me anything because I have a laser printer and packing tape. And I've also used these on my pantry, which you'll see in an upcoming video. I've had them on the front of the shelves for over a year, maybe closer to two years now. And they have no bubbles. They aren't peeling up at all. They look as good as the day that I put them on there. And what's especially great about this is that because I have commitment issues, I can remove these labels and swap things around whenever I feel like, and I can reuse this label. 
Again, it's packing tape, but um, if you get fingerprints on it, you can also run it under some water to get those off. And then of course, before you adhere them, you'll just wanna make sure that your surface is dry. If you have some moisture behind your label, just lay it on, smooth it out. You'll be able to adjust it from side to side if there is a little bit of moisture, so that's how you'll know. And then you'll wanna dab that out with a paper towel. Once there's no moisture there, they'll be good to go. Let's remember what an absolute disaster this closet looked like before. And what it looks like now after a proper declutter and organization. This closet transformation was long overdue, but I'm so pleased at how everything turned out. I want to thank you so much for being here. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found it useful. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, share this video with your friends, and make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. I'll see you in the next one.